one of the books that Brett talked about. I've got the uh, CD version, Darren Hardy, The Compound Effect. And when I think of Nick Trevelyan and his success, I really think of Darren Hardy and The Compound Effect. He studies all the greats, and he did one thing, and then he added another, and then he added another, and he added another. It's never really one silver bullet that does it. It, it really is a compound effect. So Nick Trevelyan's going to come up and have some fun with us. All right. This is going to be fun. Um, I'm absolutely honored to be standing here talking uh, to you guys because we have some legends in the room in real estate. And so everybody here, there's about five people that actually personally mentored me in real estate uh, that are here, which is great. And Jenny has been a great mentor for me. Um, but today is absolutely not about me. So let's forget all that. I sold some homes. Cool. Whatever. Uh, my goal <laughs> is to really give you guys a step back look into real estate and actually the customer that you're going to be calling. So yeah. really, however long Jim's going to let me go. Whoa, that went fast. All right. Um, it's just really about that. And what is that person struggling with? What is that? that you can offer them that would really help you guys make some more money. And that's kind of why you're here on a Saturday, right? Yeah. Right. All right, so um, my, we do something where I come from that you can never get into a talk with me without having something in place. And that's uh, one thing, the most important thing, your number one goal. So here, let's do this real quick. Everybody in your seats, just shake it out a little bit, shake it out a little bit. We've been sitting all day, having lunch and cookies. <laughs> I love that. All right, cool. Everybody shake it out a little bit. Jim, you ready? All right, cool. Uh, so on the top of your scratch piece of paper should be a big, giant number one. And on that number one should be your biggest goal right now. Now, it could be a financial goal, it could be a personal goal, it could be a relationship goal, it could be a lot of stuff. But you're here on a Saturday morning, not at the pool, not at the lake, not with the kiddos, not out having fun watching preseason football, which my bears are on at 410 today. Um, you're here for that. You're here for that goal, honestly. And I respect the fact that you guys have been here since 7 o'clock this morning, rocking and rolling, getting ready to build a new business, and I couldn't be more excited for you. But as I'm going to take a step back into what real estate's all about and what we do, I want you guys to have that goal in the forefront of your mind. Because as you're starting your new business, you're calling, you're emailing, you're texting, you're using the follow-up campaigns, you're slamming the phones, you're really trying to build a business for yourself. I want you to be clear on what you're building, though, and why. And that's the biggest thing I teach any of my realtors that work for me is, why are you doing this though? Why are we here on a Saturday morning? And I personally found that it's that why that will pull you through. It's that why that'll keep you going because now you have in the forefront of your mind what you're working on. So my team can never get into a talk with me without having that up front. So when you got it, give me a big old thumbs up and say, Nick, I got it. Everybody done? All right, cool. Um, so Stephen had said something very interesting in his speech and I was kind of flooded with a lot of emotion sitting in the back because I felt he was talking to me and I wish I would have met you 11 years ago, man. I really do, but I'm here now and that's all that matters. Um, because he was talking to the real estate agent and he said something very key though. He said, it's not about the product. Don't sell it, sell what it does. And I really started thinking about that. I was like, well, it does a lot of stuff. Think about what does this product do for you guys personally right now. Let's talk about you. What does this product do? Think about the tens and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars this thing could build for your career. It's fantastic. And then I started thinking about the struggling real estate. <coughs> and I don't know if you guys know this, uh, realtors don't do too well. So who here watches shows like HGTV, House Hunters, and uh, Flip This House? That's a good one, right? Uh, what's the million dollar listing? You guys know their TV shows, right? So, let me just talk to you guys about that. And that's kind of why I'm here, honestly. It's just to set the record straight so you guys know who you're talking to. Okay, so they had a show, they ran it locally here. It was a really fun show called, called Property Wars. You guys seen that where they bid at the foreclosure courthouse steps, right? Um, here's what they don't tell you. So you guys want some real stuff? I have a client who's on that show. One of the big investors is my client. And we're watching primetime TV. And the, the gist of the show, so those that don't know it, they're bidding on foreclosure properties at the courthouse steps. Well, what they don't tell you is that home had been sold two months prior. But they're bidding that day on the home, right? right. And it, they're going to raise the bid up, and will you go 500 more? I'll do 1,000. I got 1,000 here, right? And the, the fun part about it is they get to the door because they've never been to the home before, right? right. And it's the, is it in bad shape, or, it, it, bad shape or not? And he goes to open the door. Keep in mind, I'm on a texting conversation with the gentleman who owns the home at the time. And uh, he had bought it 60 days prior, already remodeled the property. So it's gorgeous inside. It's a beauty, right? It's a basement home in Chandler on Cooper and Ocotillo. And they get to the door, and the moment of truth, right? As he's getting ready to open it, commercial break. 
Then they come back and they open the door. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. Look at this house, it's remodeled. And then they're jumping up and down. And then they go sell it, right? And they talk about the money he made on the property. $50,000, right? I text him, what did you make on this house? He goes, dude, I made six grand on the house, right? That's reality TV. And then you have the fun realtor shows, right? Like uh, House Hunters, which I'm in the business I watch all the time. I don't know why I can't turn it off, just because it's a train wreck to me. But it's fun though, right? They're just out showing homes, and they're so, oh, pick three. Which one did you pick? And then they come back, and they're like, oh, we love it. And then they interview Why did they pick two? I can't believe it. Yeah, right? Oh my gosh. And they accepted our deal. Never would have guessed that. So that's how they put it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, I just love it. So, guys, that's why I'm here, man. Let's just shoot. I feel dumb. Yeah, right. I, I spent too much time in house. They're good shows, though. But the thing is, I do too, and I'm watching it, going, "That's not real," but I'm still gonna watch it. Right? <laughs> I can't turn it off. Um, so anyway, that's what they show real estate to be like, guys. What they don't tell you is 93% of realtors that get into this business will leave within 12 months. 93% failure rate within 12 months. Yeah, there you go. What they don't tell you is this is across the nation, out of every realtor out there, the average income is $33,000. They will not tell you that. They will not tell you that an agent who's been in real estate for less than 12 months will on average make $8,800 in his first year. That's below the poverty line. They will also not tell you that three out of four real estate agents are part-time. They won't tell you that one either. They have full-time jobs. So what am I getting at? The product that you have isn't a product. It's not plastic, it's not a website, it's not a video. That helped save somebody's career. And that's why I'm here, honestly. And I was flooded with emotions as Stephen was talking about it because I know the impact that this product will have on a real estate agent's career. How do I know? Because I'm living proof that you can fail really, really horribly in real estate. So I got into real estate when I was 19 years old, call mom, hey, med school, bad idea, I'm dropping out of college, I'm gonna get into real estate. Good idea, son. Let's do that. <laughs> so for those that don't know, it takes 90 hours of schooling to become a licensed realtor in the state of Arizona. Mm. That's it. 90 hours and a pulse. That's 90 pulse. <laughs> 500 pulse, right? <laughs> so it's 90 hours. And anybody can get a license. So guys, the good news about your business is, every single week, just hundreds more just churning out. <laughs> every week. Um, so I get a real estate at 19 years old. You do what you think you're supposed to do. You join your first real estate company you meet, and they hired me within five minutes. <laughs> they hired me for $500 I got hired. Yeah, look at me, I'm winning, ma. And I was there in my shirt and tie, and I leave, we celebrate, so I get hired, right? Well, that week, like eight more kids out of my real estate school got hired too, and we're all ready to go build a real estate career. Steven, you're gonna love this one, this is a blast. My very first real estate coach, you know what they told me to do? Grab your business cards, and hand them out at grocery stores. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm 19 years old. Hey, the Fruity Pebbles, you know, call me. <laughs> a deal on steak, call me. True story, I'm walking up and down the aisles, guys. I'm going to food courts at the mall because the guy that was my coach in real estate told me to do it. Then they told me you gotta do open houses. Open houses are the way to go. I said, okay, let's do these open houses. I was 19, had all the time in the world, so they send me to their first listing. For those that don't know the area of Phoenix, they sent me to Apache Junction. <laughs> okay, dude. Yeah. All right. Story. This is absolutely non-fabricated story. They sent me to a trailer park in Apache Junction. I'm 19. This is a new kid, right? So I go out. True story. I'm there for seven hours. The gentleman who owns the home is drinking beer all day long on the couch with me as realtor. <laughs> I'm off and running, Ma. Ready to build a career. Um, so with that being said, think anybody came in that day? No. No. Nobody. So I tried, I did open houses till I fell asleep. I figured out that if you do an open house or somebody has cable or a TV or a DVD player, guess what you get to do now? Watch TV. It took me eight months to sell my first home. But for those that don't know, when you go eight months without a dime of income coming in, it's a pretty embarrassing feeling. And when you have to sit at the Thanksgiving table with your mom and dad yelling at you of why you got into real estate, it gets even a little bit worse. That's my story. Do you think that's the same for a lot of other realtors out there? Absolutely. I just met a gentleman who's been to 19 different real estate companies. Oh. 19, hoping and searching for somebody to show him a different way. So that's why I say I was flooded with emotions because how many people got laid off when our market dipped and were forced to get into real estate as a way to feed their families? And think about what you're actually selling when you're calling these folks on the phone. That's that gentleman who was just laid off from his job who the tool that you have could actually change his career and his life. Just think about that for a second. 
somebody who's out there pounding the pavement. And I've been on presentations where I'm at the kitchen table, the phone's ringing for another realtor, and there's three more lined up outside. Guys, that's the business that I'm in. So do you think that having something like this to make me stand out is going to help me just a little bit? Yeah. It's funny, as Steve was talking about the business cards, the business cards, the business cards. Do you know how many countertops I have seen just littered with those things? They're all the same. But the way I truly, truly believe, though, is if you do what everybody else is doing, you're going to get the same exact result. You have to think differently. That's why I love what these gentlemen are doing and put together. The minute I saw it, I was floored. Jim probably should have even read you the text message because there was a lot of curse words in that text I sent you that <laughs> night when I saw the video for the first time. But that's really what's going on, guys. And if you can understand that end user and understand what he or she is fighting up against, you can create a solution to their problem. And that was why I just wanted to show up and say hi, man. I'll support anything these gentlemen are doing and uh, this team just because I truly believe that that can help somebody's career. And all I think is that gentleman who's sitting in my office has been in 19 real estate companies. And I was talking about it. I said, well, well what are you looking for? He goes, man, I just don't know what to do, man. I'm out there just calling through these, these, these lists and I'm doing these open houses, but nobody will hire me. Yeah, because you don't stand out. And if you don't stand out and don't look like an expert, who, who does want to hire you? Think about it. This is the biggest purchase or biggest sale of your entire life. Your nest egg's right in on this. Do you want to use somebody who's, ah, just give me a call. And it's funny, as Brett was talking about the gum stuck together listing presentations, I see it all the time. All the time. So something like this that can make you stand out is really going to change these real estate agents' careers, guys. And that's honestly what I, I believe at the bottom of my heart. And that's, that's really what it is. So I just want to show up, say hi. Uh, any questions I can answer for you guys about real estate at all? I'm here. As you can tell me. How long have you been using the program? Uh, we actually just got signed up on it. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The minute I, we heard about it, Jim signed this up. But um, I really believe in standing out. And I've been doing that for 10 years now. Once I figured out that, you can be like everybody else and get those results or just do something a little bit differently. Yeah. How did you stand out before the program? Uh, just pff, sheer dumb luck, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, Jim was asking did wear, me. Did you wear spicy polyester pants? Exactly, right? Beautiful, beautiful Mickey Mouse tie. That's what you did. Um, <laughs> The funny thing is, we were talking, me and Jim, about it, and I've tried to do the video stuff, and I've tried to do the editing stuff, and I've spent countless hours and tens of thousands of dollars chasing this, honestly. And when Jim came to me, he's like, how much do you think this would cost you to do personally? And I kind of started, and, and this is after many, many years of trying this stuff on my own, getting a Mac, because that's what I have to do, and trying to edit, and anybody that's trying to figure something out on YouTube, it's horrible, and you're going through the Q&As and stuff. I don't have time for that. That's not the business I'm in, right? So if I'm out there trying to figure out how to do all the stuff, I can't do what I actually get paid for, and that's real estate. I told Jim my honest opinion. If I had to pay somebody to build this whole product, I think it would take about two years, 50 grand, if, at least, right, to do it that way, to do it that good. I think somebody could do a cute little YouTube video, but again, you're still like everybody else out there, right? And their little blogs and their Twittering and all their other stuff. So, great question. Any other questions I can answer? How do you plan on marketing? Oh, everywhere. Uh, honestly, we have, uh, we, we sat down and actually had a meeting about it. First and foremost, uh, Brett touched on this too, our, our database, my past clients. Every single past client is going to get this from us. We do some fun stuff each year where we'll pop in for random holidays. One Christmas, we went to every single closed client and dropped off uh, half a dozen cupcakes and a Christmas card. Me personally, wearing a Santa hat, which was really, really fun. Um, so that, first and foremost, going to all of my past clients. But anybody I meet, whether that's from an open house, whether that's in a face-to-face -face meeting, anybody is going to get this from me personally. And if I don't meet with them, I'm going to mail it to them. So, have you been using like a constant contact, monthly mail, email thing mm -hmm. stuff? So, are you kind of excited with the brief that you've seen from Jim? With the follow-up campaign? Yes, yeah, the follow-up campaign. Oh, yeah. Everybody has been going on that it, in a second. It second. makes it for everyone. Oh, What's yeah. your opinion? So, here's my opinion. Yeah. And this will tell you how I met Mr. Jim Engel. So, I didn't know Jim was in real estate, right? <laughs> um, and like I said, I'm just honored to be here with Mr. Tom Murphy and Happy Jim. And these guys are legends in real estate. Guys, thank you for paving the way for us. Um, but Mr. Chuck Troutman in the back, Chuck, wait for me real quick. Uh, he was your MC for the day. Uh, Chuck is the most brilliant marketer I've ever met in my life. Um, and I met, uh, we were with Chuck, uh, part of his uh, mastermind group, and that's how I met Mr. Jim Engel. Um, I had no clue he was in real estate. But Jim did this, and this will prove my point. He goes, hey, do you got a business card? And, yeah, cool. Here you go. I walk away, and as fast, what, four minutes, I walk away. I have a text, an email, and a voicemail from who? 
Mr. Jim Engel. Mr. Jim Engel. And I just looked at it and said, whatever this guy has is doing, I want to go follow him everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Our first uh, meeting, Chuck signed us up for a mastermind that was supposed to be about an hour long. And uh, an hour wasn't enough for me and Jim, so we left, and I think Chuck let us do two or three hours of the mastermind, and we're not done there. So we went to dinner at Z Tejas, and I think we sat there another three or four hours. Um, and that's just Jim and Chuck, man. I could, I could pick his brain for days. So the fault campaign that he has is the most deadly, craziest fault campaign I've ever seen. So every client that we have is going on it. And again, saves time for you guys to be prospecting. Do you know, so I've written a 365-day campaign. Yeah. Do you know how freaking long that takes to write? Oh God. And like, then like I get cute and I'm like, hey you, you know, I like, try to come up with this stuff. That's not what I do, I sell houses. And I'm not even that good at that either, you know? So you're like trying to find this thing and what are they looking for? They've already done it. So that for me, that's the most appealing thing. Well, and again, as you're talking about agents, for us to relate to what are the sure. agents? Pain, Everything, they don't know what to say. Exactly. How many see this on Facebook every day? They just push stuff on yeah. you. Come see this house, come to my open house, do this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't speak to the end user. The thing about their follow-up campaign is it's going to speak to that end user. And that's what I love about the way Jim ties it all in. Because, um, Stephen, you're just brilliant, man, honestly. <laughs> I took so many notes during his presentation, but he talks about WIIFM, right? What's in it for me? And that's what buyers and sellers speak in terms of, right? So an agent can't come up with that on their own. And what they come up with, honestly, here's what agents, and I love agents and I am one myself, we come up with balloons on open house signs and cookies laid out at an open house. <laughs> Sell it, buy it, right? That's what we come up with on our own. So I just default to the pro marketers, honestly, that's what I say all the time. Yeah, so I hadn't seen, the way I, here's the way I feel about Mr. Jim Engel. He's brilliant. So if he, if he says to do something, do it, because he's a multimillionaire, he's taught me so much, I, I, and I can't repay you, honestly enough, thank you so much. So whenever he says, hey, read this, I read it. Whenever he says, do this, I do it. And when he says, hey, I got this really cool thing coming, guess what I automatically thought? Here's what I'm thinking it's gonna be, here's what it's really gonna be. Because Jim has this thing where you don't just get one pamphlet to read. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, trendsetters, eight, the book he wrote, um, and then a couple really cool folders. So that's your follow-up campaign in a nutshell, right? Um, so I hadn't seen all of this, right? And Brett Tanner is a legend in my business, so I look up to him. Jim goes, hey, check this out. I said, all right, cool. So I watched the intro video, which you guys get to see. Jaw hit the floor, I see it. I'm kind of pissed off for one, because I don't have one already. Yeah. <laughs> Pissed off for two, because I really looked at my 10-year my, my career and said, God, if I had this years ago, where would I be now? On a beach. Re yeah, really, just kind of looking at that going, oh, man, like, we really missed the boat here. In a big old truck and honk at people. Like, yeah. um, and so I sent it to my business partner, uh, and I said, you're not going to believe this. We, we B. Tanner, we look up to him, right? I said, you want to believe what B. Tanner's up to? Check out his new website. My partner writes him back, he's like, oh my God, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. We have to do that right away. Had no clue that Jim had built the whole thing and I didn't tell him, right? And I'm like, you realize this is what they're creating, right? And he goes, no effing way. It was his exact point to me from my business partner of 10 years. He goes, no effing way. Because we had tried to create some video like this. We had tried to create a website and me being our web designer, not a really good idea. <laughs> I'm just going to say it right there. And that's just not what I'm good at. I'm not great at that, you know? And it's really cool that you guys have these tools already built for you. And what do you guys get to do? You get to call guys like me and go, hey, I can honestly change your business right now. Let me show you how. I really could. And that's, that's why I came today, man. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I could have been doing today. But I wanted to come to share with you guys that this really will help somebody. And I swear to you, it really will. For my business, honestly. Think of me at 19 years old. Guys, I was running east looking for a sunset. I don't care how fast you run or how hard you run. You're not going to find it. Ever. You're really not. Hey, here's my business card. Buy your shop. And that was literally, so you guys know, and, and, and Jim and Tom will laugh about this. That's what some real estate coaches teach. They literally, true story. I'm 19 years old. Here's a phone book, kid. Get the calling. And I had a call center background. I just got the call in, got the call in, got the call in. Well, I thought that that person told me, you know, they knew what they were doing. No, they didn't. Why was she having me call this, right? And I'm not gonna call out of a phone book and get success. I'm not gonna hand out business cards at a grocery store and get success, you know? So that's honestly how I feel about it. You guys can change a ton of realtors' lives. You can keep realtors in this business that, that have been struggling. And the thing about real estate, which is interesting, this will be fun. Who in here has a real estate license? Thank you. We're all good, hardworking people. 
And that's the thing that honestly pisses me off about real estate, is they don't prep us up. So I got in, a, in, a, in an argument with a real estate school teacher. So um, after my experience of going broke for eight months, I got pissed off and I learned real estate. I was very fortunate to come across a mentor and I sold a lot of homes very quickly and I started my first real estate brokerage at age 21. Well, I got this passion to give back to the real estate community that nobody gave me. And I was really like, it was like my thing. I was mad about it. I was like, how dare you not teach these kids this in real estate school? Give them some reality. So I started speaking at real estate schools. The presentation I had, not pretty. New kids coming in real estate, don't want to hear it. Real estate teacher pulled me aside. She goes, hey, I need to see what you're going to share with my class. And I walked her through everything I just told you guys about the reality. Public statistics. The NAR, our National Association of Realtors, publicizes these stats. They were from their website. She goes, you can't show that. I said, excuse me, miss? I know I'm a young whippersnapper of 22 years old, but this is what's going on out there. You can't tell them that. And I said, well, why can't you then? Why don't you grab my presentation and go teach them? Because if you give them one idea, one insight, one different way of thinking, you might actually keep somebody in this business. And that's what frustrates me about real estate is there's not a lot of stuff out there that will really benefit you. And I get a phone call every day, and this would be a really good tip for you guys as salespeople. I get them all the time. Luckily, my office screens a ton of them, but somehow, some way, they get my cell phone sometimes. And, you know, random noise, I gotta answer them sometimes just because it could be a call on the listing. Um, and a kid calls me one day and he goes, hey, do you need more business? I said, yeah, what kind of business do I need? And you hear him literally do this. Um, 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 um. And I go, hey, Bubba, just a heads up. If you don't know what business I'm in or what type of clients I need, don't call me ever again. So think about this, guys. As you're calling these realtors, use the stuff I'm giving you. They need buyers. They need sellers. They want more money. They want more referrals. They want long-term business. Use these words, guys. I challenge you to learn everything you can about your end user. Learn everything you can about real estate. Learn, get on every blog, every forum you could possibly imagine and learn to talk their talk. And once you understand me and understand what I'm looking for, yeah, I will buy whatever you guys have to sell. Because if you called somebody and said, hey, if I could honestly add $100,000 to your bank account in the next 12 months, would you have one minute of time to listen to what I have to say? I would absolutely stop what I'm doing and listen to what you have to say. But a lot of people will call trying to sell some bunk website or something. There's no value. There's nothing, there's nothing built around that. Guys, this is absolute value from somebody who's been in the trenches for over a decade. And that's all I can tell you is my honest opinion. So. Two quick questions. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Is that how you would go in? So you know what we're doing on the back end. Yeah. Mailers, the touch points, email drips, this, that. Um, but once we have prospects warmed up, we're going to have a whole bunch of fish, I should say, fish jumping in the boat. Yeah. For those sales execs that really want to crack it out of the park and they want to just pick up the phone and call some sales execs, the part that I've said, hey, Pull up, I have three monitors, pull up your computer, their Facebook page, their LinkedIn page, their, their Twitter feed. Look at who they are, what they're about, call them up, compliment them. But would you come in with that bravado and say, hey, if you, you give me five minutes, I'll show you how you can add the next 100,000. Would you come in that strong with them? Sort of. What are your thoughts about your opener? Just break the ice. Well, first and foremost, whatever, whatever your guys' script for financial planners was, I do that. <coughs> In a heartbeat, if it's already proven, I would. Um, but I, I, I like what you said. I like the before game, though, the behind the scenes of if you got on my Facebook page, found out what target market I was going after and what I was struggling with, you could speak to that, right? So we do something really fun. Um, if you, you guys will love it. It's go so real to get on our Facebook page. We do that giant big green key. And if somebody calls me up and mentions that, that's like, a, that's like a hot button for me, right? Because when you talk about the big green key, you're talking about the over 1,000 homebuyers I've helped achieve the dream of homeownership. So yeah, I have some emotions tied there, and you know me, right? And I like that. If you show me that you've done the research to get to know me a little bit, I'm not just some random phone call you're making today. I'm very big on the quality of that conversation, right? And if you know that the end user is with X and X company, here's their target market, you've been to their website, you know they need to repackage themselves. If you can start talking to them about that and build a relationship, like Steven said this morning, it's gonna lead, lead to the big T word. And that T word is? Trust. And the minute that you have their trust, they will listen to anything you have to say. And that's, that's really it, guys, is I get a lot of these phone calls. I used to get a lot more before I had somebody help with that. 
And people call in just so half prepared, not ready to go. They don't really know what they're selling, honestly. You know, and if you guys, I don't. How many people get those telemarketing phone calls oh, late at night, though? Right? They're horrendous. But it's funny, if somebody actually took a step back and said, well, if I'm going to be in this business long term and I want to make a great level of income, which all you guys do, which is why you're here on a Saturday, learn it. Learn everything you can about real estate. Everything Brett said, study it. He gave you a couple books. Read Gary Keller's Millionaire Real Estate Agent. See what these realtors see, right? Especially if you're calling an agent from Keller Williams, you might want to know about that. Oh my gosh, I saw Brett speak. Do you know Brett, right? You guys can start a dialogue and a conversation with them and get to know them a little bit more than just some name on a piece of paper. Because again, guys, if you can break through that barrier and get to know them and care for them, you can change that person's life. And just think about that when you're on the phones. And I'm begging you to do that, please, because I really believe that too many realtors are good, hardworking people, and there's not enough systems and stuff out there to help them all, honestly. And I truly believe that this is a great product, and that's why I'm here today. So, any other questions I can answer for you? Sir? How many on your team? Fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Hey, can I just ask, what else do you have out there for marketing? I know Brett does a, like a call center type yeah. thing. What other good question, man? You yeah, we got, me and Jen were talking about it in the back, which is kind of fun. Uh, we do everything, man. I, I, I'm on the Zillows, the, the Trulias. Uh, we do newspaper ads. I'm on the back page of a local newspaper. Uh, we do about 20,000 mailers a month. I got a call center. Uh, for us, referrals have always been great. So we do a lot of stuff to our past clients. So when you ask that question about where are we going to send this to, first and foremost, my past clients, because they already know me, like you, trust me. Use that. Use that with the realtors you're calling because that person's going to refer to them. Guys, the average person moves every three to five years. So think about it. If you sent this to one of your past clients and then they resold their property with you, we'll just pay for the whole thing. Yep. So use these statistics that I'm talking about. And guys, Jim will get you my contact information. If you get like a hard sale, I'll help you. You're like, three-way me through, let's do this, man. I'm here to support Jim and anything that these guys have to do. So you're like, hey, Nick, what's going on in the market? Which, you guys want to know what's going on in the market? Yeah. Yeah, fun stuff. <coughs> you guys ever heard of this little website called Trulia? Yes. Yeah. Know the little one called Zillow? Mm -hmm. You guys know what happened with them? They merged. Yeah. Everybody do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is where I'll leave you guys. Um, the, the way real estate has always been done, and I mean no, no disrespect when I say this, okay? I'm a realtor myself. <laughs> The real estate agent of the past is absolutely gone and out of business. They cannot survive, and let me explain. So if you guys were going to look for homes, where are you going? Internet. 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 And guess what? Number one website pops up. So, oh. There's no way around it. So the way real estate used to be done is, oh, hey, I got access to the MLS. Yeah. I can show you homes. Guys, you realize that now they're creating lock boxes that will go on homes that don't even require a realtor to show them anymore. Right. You guys realize there's businesses out there that are trying to get rid of and eliminate the 6% real estate commission, thinking that'll help the end user. That's the business I'm in. So if you have always been about my little business cards, my paper business cards, I have MLS access, browse homes on my website, knock, knock, who's there? Not real estate anymore. <laughs> That's just the reality of it. I actually did a, a training for my team called um, Adapt or Die. A real estate agent has to adapt or their business is completely gone. So when I see a product like this that can help them, it's going to help them adapt. It's going to help them reinvent themselves. The video marketing in itself, somebody can't touch. So you got to look at the differences, right? Steven touched on the packaging, okay? I can let you see the MLS and here's my business card, or boom, this whole packet sitting there on the kitchen countertops. And I know from personal experience, seeing what the other presentations are like. And here's the good news. I have been up against the number one real estate agent in the Valley. And does he do this? Oh, and that's something really to think about. A lot of agents won't adapt. They won't change with the times because now they've done it for 30 years is how they've always done it. And that's where I think you guys have something really, really, really special going on because you can help a lot of people. Chuck? Uh, Nick, uh, two questions, two-part questions. Yes, sir. Number one, the value of the 20 reports to the consumer that you're going to give it to. And number two, when these guys get asked while well, you're going to make the giveaway a $500 free gift, how do you explain that? Great question. Well, if you don't give away anything, there's no point, right? Um, so, uh, funny story, Chuck will love this. Uh, so they did a, a really cool study, and this gentleman was selling raffle tickets, okay? Raffle tickets for his kid, as we all know what that's like, kids won't, you know, you do it for. And um, he was trying to sell them, trying to sell them, trying to sell them. And he was getting some results, and then what they did was they had him go into a lobby where a Coca-Cola machine was, which is very interesting to you have one. Um, and what he would do is he would pump in two quarters. And two Cokes pop out. And he would walk up to him and say, hey, uh, it just spit out to, hey, would you like a Coke? Hey, by the way, would you, 
would you want to buy some raffle tickets? <laughs> the, in that study, they sold 50% more raffle tickets. Oh, yeah. Why? It's called the law of reciprocity. Law of reciprocity. <laughs> law of reciprocity. Meaning, if I do something for you, let's say I open the door for you and there's the two doors walking in a building. I open the door for you, what are you going to do on the second door? Because you can't in your brain not do it because you feel like a jerk, right? So, Chuck, number one, for giving away those free reports, uh, you have to. Because you have to provide some sort of value. And this is funny you bring that up because that's a huge thing that I'm in retraining my staff on, is providing value up front. So let's say I'm a prospective home seller or home buyer and I reach out to this realtor. Could you imagine getting that on your doorstep three hours later? And this is part of their sales training for the realtors that we want to help with, is how, what would you do? Let's say you were selling a property, just got a hold of some realtor, and uh, three hours later somebody knocked on your door and had this big kit ready to go for you. What would you say? Oh, cool. A little different than usual, right? Oh, the other one, he's coming in three days, right? And that's the power of that. And Chuck, your first question, I'll answer the second one ahead of time. The second one was, like, as a realtor, you know, we're offering 10 free gifts they can take a choice of. They're going to get some pushback about, hey, why do I have to spend 500 bucks? So help, us, help them refute that price. Well, Chuck, I tried to write some of those free reports one time. It wasn't pretty. Because you got to line up the images and stuff like that. I, I'm not really that good at writing. So I, I tried to figure out the free reports on my own. The fact that they're done for me is fantastic because I can figure out wherever that person is and make sure they get those reports. The so. second part of the question is that we have 10 free gifts at the bottom. Yeah. Which the realtor is paying for. And so if we're going to get pushback from a realtor about, do you have to commit to give away 500 bucks? So you as a realtor. Uh, Great question. It's the same thing with the Coke is I, I personally will not go on an appointment that hasn't got a massive amount of value from us up front. I just won't go on them. Because if the person doesn't know anything about me, isn't prepped up or pre-sold on me, I, I literally am just another, another agent. Um, there's a really good book out there. Jim will highly recommend to you guys. It's called Purple Cow. It was written by Seth Godin. And I'll just sum it up. Anybody read it? Multiple times. Fantastic book, right? So the idea is very simple. We're driving, driving through farmlands. I know what that's like. My little brother moved from here. Uh, in the middle of January from Phoenix, Arizona to uh, Luff, Wisconsin. That was a fun U-Haul trip for three days. Uh, but as you're driving through Iowa, what do you see? Cows. Farms. Cows. And what are on farms? So the idea of purple cow is this. Brown cow, brown cow, black cow, brown cow, brown cow, brown cow, purple cow. What the heck's that? Guys, in, in the business I'm in, there's not many purple cows. So when somebody does something to stand out, somebody wants to hear what they have to say. So back to my point, and Chuck's point is, I won't go meet with anybody who doesn't have my information up front. That's why I absolutely love what this is gonna be about. So what we do is, we're training my uh, assistant to write out, let's say you call me, hey Nick, we're gonna meet tomorrow morning you know, to sell my property. She'll be on your doorstep within three hours with this. Boom, hey, Nick looks forward to seeing you tomorrow. And now it's got all the information. And they're gonna go online, they're gonna watch the video, and they're gonna be pre-sold. And you know what's interesting? If she had any other appointments set up, chances are they're completely canceled at that point in time. And that's the way I feel about it. So, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, just curious, what percentage of your gross is your advertising? Uh, fifty-five percent, like of my business. If that makes sense. So fifty-five percent of my business uh, total is from our prospecting and advertising, and forty-five percent is repeat business and referral in our company. And then like a dollar, uh, like a percentage of dollars. So a dollar income. I'm spending, two, I'm spending 200K a year on advertising. How much? 200K is what I spend on advertising. So is that about 10%? 20%. I spend, I, I spend a lot of money. So. so that might be a good play with somebody to say, if you want to get, you know, large Great point. Yeah, revenue, great point. Stream, so then you can get up to spend more. Oh, brilliant. I love where your thought process is going. And that's, um, let me become real estate coach for a minute. Let's pretend you guys all just joined my real estate company. Congratulations, you own a business and you're a CEO. So <laughs> realtors don't understand uh, right out the gates that they're actually starting a business. And I think if you can talk in those terms, you're absolutely brilliant when you get on the phone with somebody. I think that's fantastic. Because you can't look at this as a job. They gotta look at it as a career. And if you bring up a point of, hey, let, let's get some advertising going, you know, let's make you some money, absolutely. So I think that's a great point. Any other questions I can answer? Okay. Now, this might be a question for Jim. What, what does a realtor spend on one of those home land ads every month? Home land. Thousands. 
Thousands. Yeah, you'll spend thousands. We yeah. ran, yeah. funny story. So I got sold on this uh, Best of Chandler campaign. This was fantastic, right? So the guy walks into the office, which I never meet with anybody, but I love the best. So Chandler's my market, right? We're on the back page of Santan Sun News. I do a lot of print stuff, so I can give you a really good point. Guy comes in with the Best of magazine, and I'm like, oh, I want to be a Best of. Yeah, that's a good point, right? So we grabbed the back cover, not the inside cover, back cover. So much so, I told him I would not sign up for it unless I had the back cover. He literally goes, hold on. Called the lady he had just sold the back cover to. True story. Hey, you can't have it anymore. You're inside back cover. And resold it to me for more money. I wanted it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that, I think we paid five grand for. And they're, right? So he rolls them out on newsstands, and I'm like, the best of edition. Get by the phones, team. We're going to kill it with this thing, right? I go to the fries where it was going to be in my Chandler market. I'm so excited, right? I park my car right up front. I pop out to grab a magazine, and guess what's not there? The cover. No, my magazine. There's no magazines to be found. I'm like, oh, he put them inside. Good idea. Prime spot, prime time, up by the registers. Let's go get my magazine. I go walking inside. No magazine. I go up to the staff and I say, excuse me, where do you guys put your magazines? And she goes, what? Nobody touches those, but they're way off in the corner. Couldn't find it there either. He was 30 days late on my print advertising. To top it off, do you know how many phone calls I got on that $5,000 ad? Zero. Smart man. Zero phone calls. Goodbye, five grand. Just light it on fire. Guys, I've done the stupid, okay? They, I call it shop, uh, shopping cart advertising when, the, when they sell the realtor and having their face on the front of the Swirl shopping gold. cart, right? It's royal gold. Yeah, yeah. I've Swirl. done it all. So I didn't, it just never worked for me. And it won't work for anybody. And that's where uh, me and Jen were talking about it. Guys, print advertising is something of the past. It is. And, and Stephen hit on the head. If you don't adapt <clears throat> to the changing technology, you're already done. And the cool thing is this is already done for realtors like me because we, like that ad, right? I thought that was it. I like, told the staff, let's do this. Let's, let's, everybody gear up. Nothing. But somebody watching the video, that's where everybody's going because they can watch it on their phones and their tablets and it's convenient now. And that's what we do. That's where we spend our time. So any other final questions I can answer for you? I, don't, I know the statistic, but I can't generate the exact number. But even if you had great print media like that magazine mm -hmm. that should have bought you Sure. The first thing somebody does is take it home and they run to your web presence. Exactly. If your web presence is horrible, it immediately displays where you just spent. Sure does. You're, You're spot on. on. It, isn't that Stephen's point from this morning, though? Yeah. Is I got this little two inch business card, or I got this whole website, and on top of the website is a whole video that talks to you and pre sells you on how awesome I really am. Oh, and then by the way, when you enter your information, we're just going to keep pumping you full of value and cool stuff. We, we call it giving away good. Because if I give away good, it always comes back to me, right? Just keep giving it away and giving it away. And his quote was spot on. Uh, the Zig Ziglar, right? Help a ton of people give what they want out of life, and you get what you want as well. And that's what you guys are, are doing right here. So I, I, I believe in you guys. I think you guys are freaking awesome. I could give everybody big hugs and kisses, because I really think you're going to help somebody. And really just, I'll leave you guys with this. Think about the struggle of that person who's in real estate not knowing what to do. And I was there, guys. I remember being at night just going, what in the world do I do? And, and so the gentleman that I met who shot 19 companies, you guys, I mean, let's just be real for a second. He's in his late 40s, and he, he leveled with me. And he goes, Nick, I have nothing. I have no retirement plan. I'm just struggling right now, bud. And he goes, that's why I've been in 19 companies. I just keep jumping, trying to find somebody or something to help me. And that's, that's really what a lot of realtors go through. The good news is, guys, they're going to tee you up a truckload of leads that are already you know, pre-sold on you guys and on the product. And we're going to be doing testimonials because, as you can tell, I, in my core, believe in this product and I believe in you guys. So I'll make myself available if anybody has any questions about real estate. We're going to use them, get a ton of success stories, and then you get to talk about Brett Tanner. And he's freaking awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I'm shocked you weren't able to buy bread off, and that's you up there. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> he's a lot better looking than I am, so I'll take that. So. Guys, thank you so much for having me.